Hello and welcome to Islamic Finance Weekly, where we discuss key developments in the non interest finance markets. In the last four years, digital currencies have transformed the global financial system and transactions, especially the use of Bitcoin. Central banks and the International Monetary Fund have been cautious ensuring that there is effective surveillance, regulation and strategy to curb any potential risk to the global economy. By concept, digital currencies can be centralized or decentralized, but currently the global financial system operates on a centralized mode with a robust regulatory framework post-2008 financial crisis. Central banks are adopting digital currencies CBDCS and recently the CBN launched the e-Naira in Nigeria. According to the governor, the digital currency would deepen financial inclusion and democratize financial assets. From an Islamic law perspective, the speculative nature of cryptocurrency, which is a part of digital currencies, has triggered debates among Islamic scholars seeking clarity on if they are religiously permissible. Today, we will discuss Islamic finance and the adoption of digital currencies in Nigeria. Joining me for this conversation is Dr. Mohamed Jida, CEO of Humedi Global Financial Services. Good morning, Dr. Mohamed. Thank you for coming on the program. Good morning, once again, uh, Kola. Thank you for this invitation to come and facilitate or give a highlight of the digital currency uh, in this, this moment. All right. It's a great pleasure to meet you once again. You're yeah, welcome. So, very so, long time oh, and yes. a very busy day or I say month or years ago. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay. It's good to have you again on the Islamic Finance Weekly. So let's look at cryptocurrencies. You know, cryptocurrencies have become a common feature in the portfolio of many investors, and especially the youth. So let us start with the understanding the concept of cryptocurrency and how it works. Uh, normally, cryptocurrency or crypto asset or virtual currency, they are all called like this. They have it, uh, different definitions altogether. Mostly in the Arabic terms, we have al-umla al-mushaffara, uh, al umla al electronia So it's been translated in different terms. So they are normally as an uh, internet virtual currency and a medium of exchange also, which is used in transaction as, a, as the same way the fiat transaction or the fiat money is used. So they, they use mostly the cryptography. Cryptography is encrypted. So it's very difficult for someone to hack such cryptos or so, uh, cryptography asset. They are normally like the Bitcoin, the Ethereum, and the other ones called the coin and the asset pin. There are many as much as you can count them. We have the Binance, we have many type of cryptocurrencies nowadays. As you know, the most popular and most centralized or decentralized cryptocurrency is Bitcoin, which has been invented by the Satoshi normally in 2009. Normally, cryptocurrency works hand to hand, user to user, directly. It doesn't need any intermediaries like banks and other financial institutions. So it's a decentralized digital currency that is used nowadays. Well explained. And from your analysis, Share with us key highlight from the development of cryptocurrency as a major disruptor to global financial transactions. Normally, for me, I cannot call them positive but constructive. Why? Because anything that can add value to the economy or to the human beings, is, is, you cannot call it disruptive. But you can call it in the other way, scientifically disruptive, because it brings uh, new things. So new technology that replaces old technology is, is somehow can give, take a definition of disruptive. So mostly the, the era we are in the digital currency now is very, 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 very in advance because they are very easier, very cheaper, and they are the virtual, virtual uh, currency invented nowadays. You can use them very easily to make transactions from one place to another. So the use of them, the importance of them, Islamic perspective call them constructive digital currency. So we, from the Sharia consent, the adoption of the cryptocurrency, we can look at very constructive. So due to, the, uh, due to that fact, we can call them constructive digital currency. 
But we call them disruptive because of what the digital era, the, uh, the push they make, the new technology they drive from the old technology is also known as disruptive technology as well. All right, it is important to note that all these digital currencies are not established and not regulated by any government. The cryptocurrencies are not regulated by government, but we have some digital currency which are regulated by some central banks. So they are totally different two types of things. The digital currency that are regulated by other banks are, are part of with the, the gold and silver of here, while the other ones are not part of anything. They are all regulated. Considering the uncertainties around cryptocurrencies, what are the Sharia issues with this form of digital currency? From the Sharia perspective view, they can be used as man, which is mean as a property. Due to, due to their stability, Sharia recognizes any asset as a man if it, uh, it, it takes the, all the elements of what is prohibited in Sharia, like uh, the usury, the gharar, the uncertainty, the gambling, and all other things. Also, in Sharia view, anything that can be used customary, that people are used to it, it, it forms a form of exchange that normally used by people. Let me give an example of now Bitcoin. Bitcoin is very popular thing now in the world. Everyone knows Bitcoin, so it can be adopted as a currency to be used. So the Sharia issues are just limited to what is well known by the people and what can be used if there is no any element that Sharia is pro uh, prohibited, this kind of such thing that you can be used. So normally cryptocurrencies are well known to the people now and people use them as a medium of, of exchange due to the, some of their values and some of the terms and conditions that can be well recognized according to the Sharia principles. So the Islamic jurisprudence have accepted them as a currency, has, has accepted them as a uh, type of medium of exchange that can be used for daily activities. From an Islamic perspective, so money is exclusive use for, for an exchange, but not, so, not a speculation on trading to gain profit purposely. From the Maliki point of view, mostly, if everything, even though a skin, a skin can be used as a money. Why? Because if people accept that kind of thing of the money, so it can be replaced as a money. It doesn't mean it have to be a gold, silver, have to be something that is very, have value. No, this is not the view of most of the Maliki school. So when the people come together and accept anything that have a, have a, have a theme, or it had uh, have a very good value to the economy, so it can be used as a property and can be used as a money. So being cryptocurrency is very important now. Many people have accepted it globally. They use it and they, they make a form of transaction with it. Talking about cryptocurrency, which the adoption of cryptocurrency globally. So, well, let's look at the Sharia guidelines. Is trading in cryptocurrency allowed or around? Uh, this is a very good question. Trading in cryptocurrency, is it halal or haram? Or is it, you can add another one. Is it shubaha? Shubaha is something that it doesn't come clear. It, it's a mediator between the halal and haram. Mostly, the Sharia scholars are divided into two in this kind of thing. So we can say it is halal based on what is the guidance that we have according to the Sharia as the rules I listed in the other questions, so it can be halal. It can be haram. Why it can be haram? Because up to now, up to now, the, the, the sign of the cryptocurrency or the transaction dynamics is not very clear for, from, for the Sharia scholars. So we need to have a committee together of the Sharia scholars, the finance experts, the lawmakers, and very deep in IT personnel or IT experts that can explain how this thing works. Because up to now, the Sharia is very neutral on it. No any Sharia scholars have accepted this in deeply performance. They all assume, they assume, we can say it can be halal. We can say it can be haram. So the only thing we can come out with is shubha. Shubha is something that is, is, is within, between halal and haram. We cannot say halal totally, and we cannot say haram totally. Why? Because people are still going on on research. So research in this area is very important still going on. So we, we don't need to be fast of saying this is halal or this is haram. So but looking at the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nowadays, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made things easy for us. It creates something that make us, makes life easy. So it 
it's so like when you see the cryptocurrency it makes something easy it makes things easy it's very fast you can just stay in your house without wasting your time type your app and just do uh, send any transaction you need so for my own view up to now the sharia scholars have not decided on what is what what the cryptocurrency is halal or haram but the only view that i can be and be with is halal why because it will be halal because all other central banks are now creating their own digital currency and they are regulated so be regulated you cannot say it is haram again so, if you so say when regulation is there, if you say cryptocurrency is halal but you know the teachings of islam is that for money to be used as a tool of exchange in islam's islamic teaching money has to be safe stable and effective is cryptocurrency cryptocurrency is it safe is it stable is it effective yes it's a good question to ask like this cryptocurrency specifically bitcoin nowadays bitcoin is is very safe why because you have to you have to you have to get two wallet of cryptocurrencies or bitcoin the one wallet is yours the second wallet is generated globally you can use the medium with your passcode to make transfer make transactions so in this way it is safe and is effective is very well known effective because the transaction is very simple and easier to to be done so for my own view that is what i, I can say based on the research i came on cryptocurrency can be halal or i assume i'm assuming it will be halal most of the scholars in malaysia now currently the malaysian you know malaysia are very good in islamic finance and they are advanced in islamic finance they accept cryptocurrency even in the central banks even in the security exchange commission they have guidelines on it so even in uae they even named their cryptocurrency or the digital currency as mcash us singapore so being globally accepted this is one of the factors the sharia look at so like i told you in the beginning the maliki school always look at what people accept as a customary so it being accepted as a customary so that can be halal so the 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 use of cryptocurrency based on the sharia looking it can be halal not totally halal but it can be halal All right so there is still no clarity from the global islamic jurists on whether cryptocurrency including bitcoin can be used as payment so how is this affecting the opportunities for the international non interest finance market yes uh, normally we have to look at two things here uh, when something is accepted by government or something is not accepted by government so most of the muslims view on cryptocurrency used as a mode of payment is 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 not like that of a fiat what uh, is not like that of a fiat currency because the what what we can say the increase and in acceptance will make it qualify as a cryptocurrency mode of payment so let's look at it globally worldwide is the cryptocurrency not accepted globally is accepted so it qualified to be as a mode of payment and a mode of exchange nowadays well, China, because the biggest markets just banned the crypto trade Yes, this is the uh, recently they do that, but before they use it, and even though that some of the China, some of the Ch- Chinese side, they use, still use the cryptocurrency as an asset to do transaction with it. I think in a few days last week we we did a transaction with a Chinese company through the cryptocurrency asset. I am I am telling you this based on experience that I, I, I passed through. So in China, one of the biggest market players have uh, uh, cancelled use of cri- cryptocurrency will not uh, make it invalid again. So it is being used properly globally w- worldwide as a medium of payment, as a medium of exchange that most of the Muslim and non-Muslim use it. So look at it in the form of uh, in the form of payment that has been used for many years since 2009 to this uh, to 2021 is almost about 10 years. so the acceptance make it qualified to be used as a medium of exchange exchange and medium of payment so we don't have any 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 issue with that all right you know in general islam prohibit any money from interest that's just the principles of islamic finance so that is riba so islam prohibit riba so but let's look at in february 2021 the central bank of nigeria issued guidelines restricting banks from 
cryptocurrency transactions because it was devoid of proper regulation and prone to financial crime. But with, with the recent launch of the e naira digital currency by the Central Bank of Nigeria, what are the implications for the non-interest finance market? Yeah, the Central Banks have just implemented the e naira which is served as the digital uh, CBN digital currency to be used on all the 32 banks or more than that. So it's a very good development for the from the central banks. It, this is what we we're expecting since long time ago. But due to the lack of knowledge or lack of uh, uh, being uh, going coming into the system long time ago, now this is the right time for the CBN to drive the economy through this digital currency. Mostly, it will be safe as a tool that can drive the economy from many other perspectives. So looking at what is called the fiat money being very, 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 very generated worldwide in the global economy, that will cause the huge because the supply and demand of it is very high. So coming back to digital currency, when we need the supply, you need the demand. So you have everything going right hand in hand. But when you have the supply and you have a low demand, the supply will also be very uh, non-legitimate. So we consider this uh, movement of CBN for their own uh, digital currency is a very tool for driving the economy to the next level. So Inshallah, we there are no implications for the non-interest finance market concerning Inera in Nigeria. I don't think there, there is because the main thing we need to focus about the digital currency is regulation. Is regulation. Regulation is one of the key things. So when CBN did this or invented this in era, it's regulated through CBN. No any hackers, no, so no any hackers can ever enter into this digital currency to use such a platform. They are all encrypted. They have a digital forms to regulate all this kind of thing. So Moving to that is a good example to the other African country to intimidate CBN to go ahead. So now things will be very easy for transactions, for the import and exporters of Nigerian investment. So looking at it is a very good ahead for the Nigerian economy to be making it fast and also to create many kinds of instances of transaction. So now is a very easy way for Nigerians to make any transaction with the US, with the Singapore, with the, even the China, and other uh, the UAE countries as well. So it's a very it's a very good in intervention that we are supposed to be ahead of it as a giant of Africa and, and a world economy country like Nigeria, which we are supposed to be in 2040 or 2030, one of the biggest world African economy in the world. Okay, and this is also an opportunity for the ethically minded investors to for, for use yeah. of trade. So this is being backed by the government, the Central Bank of Nigeria. Thank you very much for those perspectives. So what, what would be your advice to ethical and Sharia compliant investors on leveraging the digital currency for their business and transaction in Nigeria and across the globe? For mostly for the commercial banks, I think uh, is a very good development today. So that is their own way to key in. It's very, 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 very noted nowadays. When a regulator like a CBN have invented an app for you to make a digital currency, what for the, for what next for the commercial banks to do is to adopt it immediately and go on. Looking at it, this is a digital currency that is well regulated from the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria. So the ethical finance are getting a way to get in with their transaction and all the financials they have to the next step. Why? Because it will be very easy for the importers and exporters to make transactions as well. Looking at it before of this uh, CBN digital currency, we need to have an LC. You need to have many papers documentation to do all this kind of transaction globally. So now it's an easy way of payment. It's very easy and it's not challenging. Just with the top of a print of a hand, you can make any a huge transaction about millions of billions of naira for the ease of the importers and exporters. So I'm calling on globally and also for the commercial banks within the Islamic banking and finance need for the windows also to struggle hard and, and tap these applications, advise their customers, advise all the services they have, and to look at what is different from the other one. So CBN have have tried a lot and have, be, have changed the, the game now, and they are looking forward to make changes also as well. So uh, being at, at this top, or at this stage, at this time of economy of the pandemic pandemic way, so we need to look things. Uh, we need to think outside the box also. So uh, we are just calling on this uh, on the commercial banks to look at the things in a different way. 
because many people were asking some questions. So what are we going to use the fiat money? Are we going to use the fiat currency again? So what is if CBM banned the cryptocurrency and accept digital currency, is it not the same? So things are very, many questions are arising, but people will see the changes uh, inshallah for the meantime. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Mohamed Dida. It was an interesting session with you on digital currencies activities from an Islamic law perspective. We appreciate your intervention. Thank you so much for this call. I mean, I, I really appreciate your your pushing of Islamic banks in every of the programs that I used to follow on LinkedIn and other social medias. It's a very interesting thing. It's a very interesting. You know, if you have the media now, you have the power of everything. Exactly. So the media is a subject in that you can push exactly. everything and it can be used as a tool of everything in the economy. So mm -hmm. it's a good thing and it's a good idea for your program. And I am very optimistic it can be a, a, a change. In thank, every way, inshallah. Thank, thank you, you very much. And that was Dr. Muhammad Jida, CEO Ali Umebi Global Financial Services. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Have a great day and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. In Nigeria, the eNaira provides the opportunity for assessing the dynamics in the adoption of digital currencies. But the lack of clarity on whether cryptocurrency is permissible or non-permissible in the non-interest finance market is creating a lot of uncertainty for ethical investors. It is therefore imperative for the Islamic finance scholars and Jewish to speak clearly on if digital currencies will help to complement Sharia compliant funds and products to facilitate trading and investment. And that brings us to the end of today's session. Visit www.poshaengie.com to read more on Islamic finance. Click on the Web TV banking channel to watch our weekly videos. You can also follow us on our social media platform displaying on the screen. Many thanks to all our viewers for watching and following the Islamic finance weekly. Please stay safe and enjoy your weekend. <laughs>